Have you ever imagined creating your own line of chickens, one that combines a breed's high egg production with any other productive quality from another breed? Or maybe you've wanted to fix a specific genetic trait so it's passed down predictably from one generation to the next. If so, get ready, because you're about to discover the most powerful tool in a poultry breeder's arsenal, backcrossing. And the best part is, it's not just theory. In this video, we're going to show you a real-life breeding project we've done especially for you, using backcrossing to transfer the barred pattern from a barred Plymouth Rock to a Rhode Island Redline. You'll see the before and after and the magic of what the chicks look like from each cross. This is the only way to truly understand how selective breeding is done in practice, and the results are amazing. Backcrossing isn't a new technique, but it's surprisingly little known among hobbyists. It goes beyond a simple cross between two breeds. It's a scientific method of small-scale genetic engineering that gives you total control over the traits you want in your flock. It's the bridge that connects the randomness of a common cross with the precision of selective genetics. In this video, we'll break down every step of the process, from the basics of inheritance to the practical application in your own co-op. By the end, you won't just know what backcrossing is, you'll have the knowledge and confidence to start working on your dream project. Get ready to become a true genetic architect of your own new breed. And if you liked the video, don't forget to leave us a like, hit the notification bell, and subscribe if you're not already part of this great community of ornamental poultry keepers. Let's get started. In its simplest form, a backcross is a cross between a first-generation hybrid, a chick from two different breeds, and one of its parents, or a bird from the same parent breed. Essentially, you're breeding the hybrid offspring back to a pure bird of the breed you're interested in for a specific trait. This is done to transfer and consolidate a specific genetic trait without sacrificing the other valuable characteristics of the original breed. The best way to understand it is with an analogy. Imagine you have a family bread recipe, the pure breed, that's delicious, but it's missing an exotic flavor, the trait you want. The initial cross is like adding that flavor for the first time. Backcrossing, however, is the process of taking a portion of that new mix and returning it to the original recipe, ensuring the exotic flavor becomes a permanent part of your bread without losing the texture or the base flavor of your family recipe. This process of returning the hybrid to the pure parent isn't random. Each time you perform a backcross, the genetic makeup of the offspring becomes more similar to that of the parent breed you're backcrossing to. Therefore, with each new generation, the probability of the offspring showing the desired trait while also inheriting all the other characteristics of the pure breed increases exponentially. Backcrossing is a long-term strategy. You won't get perfect results in the first generation. It requires patience, observation, and careful planning. However, its power lies in the fact that it is a predictable method for manipulating genes, allowing you to achieve results that random crosses could never guarantee. To understand why backcrossing is so effective, it's vital to understand basic inheritance. Every characteristic in your chickens, from the color of their eyes to their egg-laying ability, is determined by genes, which come in pairs, one from each parent. The way these genes interact is the key. Genes can be dominant, which are expressed if they are present, or recessive, which are only expressed if the bird inherits two copies of them, one from each parent. When you cross two purebred chickens from different breeds, the result is the F1 generation. These F1 chicks carry a mix of genes from both parents. For dominant traits, the dominant gene will be expressed. For recessive traits, the gene may be present but not visible, making them carriers of the trait. It's important to understand that even if you don't see the trait in the F1, the gene is there, waiting to be activated in future generations. Backcrossing takes advantage of this inheritance. By crossing the F1 hybrid with the pure parent, you're increasing the probability that the offspring will inherit more of that parent's genes. Specifically, in the first backcross, BC1, the offspring will have, on average, 75% of the genetic material of the parent breed you're backcrossing to. This gives you a big head start in consolidating the traits you're looking for. The key to this step is that you are isolating the gene you're interested in. With each backcross generation, the genetic makeup of the offspring becomes more like that of the parent you're backcrossing to, which increases the chances of getting the desired trait and fixing it in a predictable way. It's a process of gradual genetic purification to get the final result you want. The first step for a successful backcrossing project is knowing exactly what trait you want to get or improve. The characteristic must be specific and observable. Are you looking for a particular breed's plumage color? A unique comb type, like a pea comb or rose comb? Or maybe a production trait, like a high egg-laying rate or eggshell color? Identifying the trait is crucial because it is the starting point of your entire strategy. Once you're clear on it, you must select the donor parent for that trait. 
For example, if you want the blue color, you should use a purebred chicken known for that color. This chicken will be your backcross parent, the point of reference you will always return to to consolidate the gene you're interested in. Without this starting point, there is no clear direction for the project. Although visible traits are the easiest to work with, backcrossing can also be applied to less obvious characteristics, such as disease resistance or a docile temperament. However, these are often controlled by multiple genes, which makes the process more complex and requires more backcross generations. For beginners, it's better to start with simple, visible traits like plumage color or comb shape. Once you have identified the trait and the donor parent, it is important to evaluate their quality. The bird should not only have the characteristic you're looking for, but it must be a healthy, vigorous individual that meets the breed standards. A backcross is only effective if the parents are of the highest genetic quality, as any inherited weakness will be amplified in the process. The starting point of any backcrossing project is the initial cross, which produces the F1 generation. You simply take a hen from breed A, the one with the trait you want, and cross it with a rooster from breed B, the one you want to improve. The result will be a group of hybrid chicks known as F1s, the first generation. These first generation hybrid chicks can look very different from their parents, often combining traits from both in unexpected ways. The most important thing about this generation is that each individual carries a copy of the genes from each parent. This means they carry the gene for the trait you want to transfer, even if it doesn't show up visibly. The goal of this step is to create a diverse genetic base. The F1 generation is not the final result, but the bridge to the backcross. The key is to select the best individuals from this generation for the next step, choosing those that show good development and health. While they may look like common chickens, genetically they are a treasure, as they hold the key to your project. It is important to remember that the results of the F1 generation can be very variable. Depending on whether the trait you're looking for is dominant or recessive, the offspring may or may not show it. Regardless of the visual result, the true value of these hybrids lies in the genes they carry hidden, ready to be purified and amplified in the next steps of the backcross. The Magic of the Process This is where the real magic of backcrossing begins. For this step, you must take an individual from the F1 generation and cross it back with one of the parents, or with a genetically identical bird, from the pure breed that has the desired trait. For example, if your goal was the plumage color of breed A, you take an F1 hybrid and cross it with a hen from breed A. This cross is known as a BC1, first backcross generation. This cross has a very clear and scientific purpose, to increase the proportion of the parent breed's genes in the offspring. The F1 generation has 50% of the genes from each parent. By backcrossing it with the parent that has the trait you're interested in, you are increasing the inheritance of that parent in the offspring. Thus, the BC1 chicks will have, on average, 75% of the genetic material of the parent you are interested in and a much higher probability of showing the desired trait. This is the fundamental principle that makes backcrossing such a powerful and predictable tool. The key to success in this step is careful selection. From the F1 generation, you must choose the individuals that look the healthiest, have the best confirmation, and ideally, show at least a small manifestation of the trait you want to fix. By crossing them back with a hen from the pure breed that has the trait, you guarantee that the gene is reintroduced into the lineage and strengthened in the next generations. This step is what distinguishes selective breeding from a simple random cross. Backcrossing doesn't stop at just one generation. To truly fix a characteristic, you must repeat the process. The best hens from the BC1 generation are crossed again with the parent breed, creating the BC2 generation, which will now have 87.5% of the original parent's genes. This process of gradual purification allows you to reach a point where the bird is almost identical to the original breed, but with the characteristic you have transferred to it. It's a path of patience, but the results provide unparalleled genetic control. Imagine you want to create a line of chickens with a high egg-laying performance, similar to a Rhode Island Red, but with the beautiful and distinctive barred plumage pattern of a barred Plymouth Rock. Rhode Island Reds do not have the gene for barred plumage, but since it is a dominant trait, it is the perfect candidate for a backcrossing project that demonstrates the technique clearly and effectively. The first step is an initial cross, F1, between a barred Plymouth Rock rooster and a Rhode Island Red hen. The offspring of this cross, the F1 generation, will inherit the dominant barred gene from the father, so all the male and female chicks will show this trait. The goal of this cross is to combine the egg-laying ability of the Rhode Island Red with the desired plumage pattern in the offspring. 
Next, you take the best F1 hens and cross them back with a pure Rhode Island Red Rooster. This is the back cross, BC1. The offspring of this cross will have 75% of the Rhode Island Red genetics and still have a 50% chance of inheriting the Bard gene. With each back cross generation, the percentage of Rhode Island Red genetics will increase, improving the egg-laying ability of the resulting chickens. This example illustrates the efficiency of back crossing. Instead of a random cross that might not give you the expected results, back crossing allows you to direct the evolution of your flock. You are taking a specific trait from one breed, the Bard pattern, and implanting it in a controlled way into another. With this method, there are no surprises, only the certainty that your genetic project is moving toward the goal you have set. Backcrossing offers benefits that random crosses can't match. One of the most important is the fast fixation of a trait. Instead of waiting for many generations of random crosses, backcrossing allows you to consolidate the desired trait in just a few generations, which speeds up your breeding projects. This method reduces the time and effort needed to get the perfect result. Another great advantage is genetic control. This method allows you to work with a specific trait without compromising the rest of your original breed's genetics. For example, you can add a new color to your line of chickens without affecting their vitality, size, or excellent egg-laying rate. It's like adding a single ingredient to a recipe without changing the entire dish, which gives you unprecedented control. In addition to fixing traits, backcrossing can be an effective way to improve genetic diversity within a pure line that has become too inbred. By introducing a new gene from a different breed through backcrossing and then returning to the original line, you can strengthen the gene pool and prevent health and vitality problems that can arise from inbreeding. In short, backcrossing is a technique that allows you to customize your flock. Instead of relying on what other breeders have already achieved, you can take an active role in creating a unique line of birds that perfectly fits your needs and preferences. It's the way to go from being a simple breeder to a true breed architect. Although backcrossing is a powerful technique, it is not without risks. The most common mistake is not keeping accurate records. Without knowing exactly who's who in your project, you can make mistakes that undo years of work. It is crucial to tag and record every bird, its lineage, its father, and its mother. Without proper documentation, it's impossible to ensure the purity of the backcross. Another risk is excessive inbreeding. If you're not careful when selecting individuals for the backcross, you can end up breeding very close relatives. This can lead to inbreeding depression, which manifests as health problems, low fertility, weak chicks, or even deformities. It's always best to have several parallel lines to avoid this risk, crossing them periodically to maintain vitality. In addition, you must be aware that backcrossing may not work for all traits. Those that are controlled by multiple genes are much more difficult to transfer. A novice breeder might get frustrated if they don't see immediate results. Patience and knowledge of the genetics behind a specific trait are vital to avoid disappointment. Not all traits are equal, and some will require more time and effort. Finally, it's important not to become obsessed with a single trait and forget the big picture. By focusing on a specific trait, you can inadvertently lose other important attributes like hardiness, a good temperament, or excellent body conformation. Always keep an eye on the general health and well-being of your chickens, ensuring that the backcross doesn't compromise their quality of life. To make backcrossing more tangible and visually impactful, we propose a real-life visual example of a breeding project. Our goal was to combine the high egg-laying rate of the Rhode Island Red with the beautiful barred pattern of the barred Plymouth Rock. This method allowed us to transfer the genetic trait of barred plumage to a line of laying hens and also to fix other more complex traits like hardiness, larger eggs, and a calmer temperament. The first step was the initial cross, F1. The result of this cross was exactly as expected. All the F1 chicks came out barred, inheriting the dominant gene from their father. Although the barring was not as uniform as in a purebred Plymouth Rock, this result is the first link in the chain of this genetic project. Next, the magic becomes evident. Here we have photos of the offspring from the first backcross generation, BC1. To get them, we bred our best F1 hens back to a Rhode Island Red Rooster. As you can see, these birds already look much more like the original Rhode Island Red, but they keep the barred pattern. It's the first step to purifying their genetics and bringing them closer to our final goal. Finally, we show you the hens from the third and fourth backcross generations, BC3 and BC4. With time and selection, we have achieved birds that are visually almost identical to a pure Rhode Island Red, but with the barred trait now fixed. At this stage, the more subtle traits we also selected for, like better hardiness, larger eggs, and a calmer temperament, have also been consolidated. 
It is the ultimate proof that backcrossing allows you to mold the genetics of your chickens. As we have just seen, backcrossing is a powerful tool, but its true potential lies in the breeder strategy. Selection and genetic direction are the key decisions that turn a simple cross into a breeding project with defined results. The initial cross, F1, is just the starting point. What you do next is what really matters. Your first major decision is the path of selection. You can focus on visible traits, like the barred pattern we just showed, and select to maintain it in each generation. Or, on the other hand, you can focus on more subtle productive traits, like earliness or hardiness, ignoring the visible pattern. Both goals are valid, but the path you choose will determine the final result of your line. Your second major decision is the direction of the back cross. In our example, we back crossed with the Rhode Island Red Line to improve egg production. But if your goal was to create a hen with the hardiness and size of the barred Plymouth Rock, you would back cross the offspring with the Plymouth Rock parent in each generation. This decision determines which of the two parent breeds your final hen will resemble most in its hidden genetics. In conclusion, Backcrossing is a flexible tool. Choose the direction of your project based on what matters most to you, whether it's the aesthetics of your chickens or their performance. This strategic decision is what makes selective breeding both an art and a science. As we have seen, backcrossing is not a one-generation process. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Patience is one of the most important tools in a breeder's arsenal. You will see gradual results, and it's possible that not all birds in a generation will show the trait you want. It takes time and perseverance to achieve the final goal, and each generation gets you a little closer. Just as important is detailed record keeping. You must keep a meticulous record of each bird, its hatch date, its lineage, its father, and its mother. You must also document the traits they show. A notebook, a spreadsheet, or an app for breeders are essential. Without a record, it's impossible to know if a back cross is working and to avoid inbreeding, which is one of the biggest risks. Consider record-keeping the DNA of your project. It allows you to make informed decisions about which birds to cross next and helps you see the progress of your work over the generations. Good record-keeping allows you to identify the most successful lines and discard those that are not giving the expected results, thus optimizing your effort and time. The act of record-keeping also helps you become more observant. By documenting the traits, you will begin to notice small details that you would otherwise overlook. This level of attention to detail is what distinguishes a hobbyist breeder from a professional who achieves the most impressive results. As you have seen, backcrossing is much more than a simple cross. It is a scientific technique and a form of art that allows you to mold the genetics of your flock to create birds that perfectly fit your goals. It gives you the power to fix traits, improve vitality, and create a line of chickens that you can truly call your own. We hope this video has inspired you and given you the confidence to take the next step. The key is to start with a clear goal, keep detailed records, and have patience. If you want to continue learning more secrets about raising chickens, how to maximize your production, and build the farm of your dreams, don't miss out. Subscribe to the channel right now and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video. If this content was useful, give it a good like and share it with others who, like you, are looking to take their poultry project to the next level. See you in the next video. To your success, fellow breeder, until next time.